So let us begin. So this is we have seen the last time the model which we are talking about the multiple regression model. So this was the model and uh, this we can write in terms of observations. So whenever we have observations, the x1 representing some observation, x2 representing some observation. So one can write one can write in this form also. A same thing we have written in the form of matrix. So if I'm writing in terms of matrix, I have changed that matrix, and uh, this is the matrix. One can able to see the previous expressions, and they can write down this expression in terms of matrix. Now this matrix will be write, written as y is equal to x beta plus epsilon. Y is equal to x beta plus epsilon. And we have some order here. Okay, so that order I have mentioned here. The order of y is n cross one because we have n observations into one column. So row and column. This is n rows and this is column. So n into one vectors of n observation on the study variable. And similarly, we have here. So here we have a n observations. So n into k and there is extra one. So n into k plus one. Here we have k into 1 not because beta is not there beta not is there that's why it is k plus 1 okay, so k plus 1 into 1 if we get multiply we'll get again n into 1 so n into 1 n into 1 n into 1. so we can do that means your left and right hand side both are correct so this is some explanation about your order there are some assumptions we have seen, which is already there in the <coughs> SLR, so we can just go through that. So we have seen the method of ordinary least square method to estimate the parameters. So far we have seen all, only the OLS, not MLE, not any other method, right? Because OLS is only the method uh, which is there in your syllabus, but there are so many methods to compute like UMV, like MLE okay so these are the methods also available to estimate the parameter but that is not there in your syllabus but just know a little bit more about that and then uh, we have used since that uh, basic conceptual that we have to do the multi matrix multiplications and uh, one can do the matrix multiplication the very important thing is that you need to always write this result so, so based on this result one can get the risk beta value okay so that is the important part okay but still it is not over still it is not over Can you able to see the screen for MLR2? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, as we know, until the ANOVA table is not there at the last, your model is not over. Okay. So, once we have estimated the parameter, which is your beta hat, which we have obtained in the last class, or maybe I will write it down here only, here also. So, we have estimated beta hat for MLR. So, we have here, let me select pen. So, for MLR, for MLR, 
that means multiple linear model we have estimated beta hat that is x prime x inverse x prime y using OLS method, ordinary least square method. Okay. So, <coughs> this is the estimate, estimation part. This is the estimation part. But here, once you have estimated this, we need to check also whether this particular estimation or beta's value which we have estimated is that value significant or not. Okay, it's like uh, in estimation you estimate the parameter using MLE method, using MME method, right? But just estimating the parameter, is that sufficient? No. We have to check whether it is satisfying the property of, you can say, property of unbiasedness, it's property of uh, consistent, property of efficient, okay? So then only those estimators are good. Otherwise, that is not good, okay? So you go for those concepts, right? But apart from, apart from that, we need to test also. So if this beta value or you can say if this particular beta one is taking some value is that really taking these values or not okay so for that we need to always right use the procedure and the, that is called procedures of procedure of testing Testing just a minute. Let me close the all. So we need to test the overall overall significance of the model. That means we need to test. Let me start because I cannot write properly. So we have here H naught which is beta 1 is equal to beta 2 is equal to beta k equal to 0. First is H1 not H naught. And we know that in the last class we did uh, this ANOVA table for uh, to explain yes sir screen se nahi ke hai acha ek minute oh now it is so we have anova table here So this is another table we have seen for 
two explanatory variables. So when we have a two explanatory variables, we have this amount table. And we have seen all tested and everything for uh, two explanatory variables. So now if we have a k explanatory variable, then what could be the change? What could be the change? Okay. So if we have a k, when it was two, it was two. When there were two explanatory variables, then we have written there two. Now it is k. So it is going to be k. Similarly, we have n minus 1 observations. So if I do n minus 1 k, I will get I will get k minus 1. Right? See, this is similar way we are doing for the k expanded area. Otherwise, there is no change in the as we did for 2, you can go for k. So again, the degree of freedom, this is going to be same, this is going to be same. Okay. So it will be divided by k, it will be n minus k minus k. Okay. And one can get FKL based upon this, right? FKL can be calculated. FKL is equal to ESS upon degree of freedom divided by RSS upon degree of freedom. So N minus K minus 1. And I know this is follows F K comma N minus K minus 1 degree of freedom. And what will be conclusion? If FKL will be greater than F tab that is table value which is nothing but F K comma N minus K minus 1 comma alpha then we reject the change. This conclusion also same for even if you consider for SLR whether you can consider it for two explanatory variable whether you consider it for K explanatory variable all are same and and conclude that and conclude that beta 1 beta 2 beta k are significant okay so when you are going to when you are going to check whether all these betas are significant. When these betas are significant, then only you have to go for individual test. Otherwise, there is no need of going, going for the significant. No need of going for the individual model. Okay. So, for example, if I am saying, uh, what, what is my H0? What is my H0? This one. If I'm accepting that, if I'm accepting that, he, that means do not rejecting that, do not rejecting H0. That means beta 1, beta 2, beta k is equal to 0. That means all regression coefficients are 0. Okay. So there is, there is no need of going further for any testing because all are not equal to 0. That means there is some values. Sorry, all are equal to 0. All are equal to zero that means there is no change in the model but this is never happened in this in real life situation okay and then we have to always reject h0 so if this reject h0 that means these betas are significant and we are going to accept h0 so this means beta 1 is not equal to beta 2 not equal to beta 3 and so on not equal to beta 3. So now we are interested, now we are interested in testing individual, whether beta 1 is equal to beta 2, whether beta 2 is equal to beta 3 and so on. Okay. So that's why we go for always individual testing. Okay. We go for always individual testing. That is very important concept. You can always 
so the note what is the note when 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 overall model is significant then we go for individual test just remember this result very important so whenever overall model is significant then only we go for the individual test means have to do sep individual test and in that case we need to always use procedure of procedure of individual procedure of individual testing individual coefficient testing that means we need to check whether this beta i is equal to 0 versus h1 beta i is not equal to 0 okay so here i am just checking whether my beta 1 is equal to 0 beta 2 is equal to 0 beta 3 is equal to 0 and so on not testing beta not make sure that your i is running from 1 to k i is running from 1 to k and when we you know when you go for individual testing that means we are applying here we are applying here test statistics will be then we are testing always we apply which test can anyone tell me we apply which test which test we apply for individual testing t t test so t is equal to beta i hat minus beta i upon standard error of this is all you have studied in the sla and if mod of t greater than equal to t n minus k minus 1 comma alpha by 2 we reject h and same same conclusion we conclude that conclude that beta is r i can say i am taking from beta so you can take this as beta beta is significant one can find confidence interval also one can find confidence interval also not confidence interval you can write always you can write always 100 one minus alpha Or beta. Can I beta i? If that will be the beta i hat plus minus t n minus k minus one comma alpha by two into standard error of 
data I had. This will be confidence interval for all the data. So whenever it is asked for obtain confidence interval, we always go for the estimating this using this formula. This is we have already seen in the case of simple linear models. If we have a, your own nodes of a simple linear model, you can just open and we can able to see this uh, all procedures and everything will be there in your notes. Okay. Okay. Any questions so far till here? Any questions? Let me know. Yes. No question. Can we proceed? Yes, sir. Oh. Now, there are few more concepts which we have already seen in the SLR. So I will not going to discuss more things, but let me just introduce this, this thing. Adjusted R score. So we have seen the formula for R square. What is your R square formula? R square is equal to TSS upon TSS. So error sum of square divided by total sum of square. This can be written as 1 minus RSS upon TSS. Right. And further if you just substitute these values because these values are there. right? RSS is this one divided by this value uh, RSS upon TSS. If you just substitute these values what is residual sum of square? This is a in general formula, right? This is in general formula. This is not pertaining to the model. Okay. The in general formula is that ESS upon TSS. So ESS is basically it is the error sum of square and this is residual sum of square. See residual sum of square is nothing but your ESS also, right? Yes, sum somewhere notations we have used different so that's why this is uh, something different so If I am just substituted substitute these values in uh, here, RSS upon TSS, what is your RSS? 1 minus R square upon this value, 1 minus R square into this value, right? Divide by TSS. What I will get? This will get cancelled. So remaining is 1 minus R square. Remaining is 1 minus R square. And 1 minus 1 minus R square, it's become R square. So again, you are getting the same expression, right? So that's why I'm not substituting and I, I, I may get the same result. But 
but if i am writing in general it is 1 minus summation e i square upon summation y i square okay. so what this r square represents what this r square represents anyone What is this R square represent? Yes. Can you hear me? Students, can you hear me? I am waiting for a response. The goodness of it. Okay. So R square says whether the model is good or not, right? So you can say goodness of it. So if the model is good fit, when R square is high, one can say the model is good fit. But what it gives now? What it interpret? So R square is also known as the coefficient of determination, right? If, if we have here the term. So, and which is basically the ratio of sum of square, expand sum of square, or you can call it ESS upon total sum of square. But what it gives? Is that give the percentage or proportion of variation in the dependent model in the dependent in the dependent a proportion of variance variation in the dependent is explained by is explained by independent so it's give the percentage it's give the proportion of a variation in the dependent and which is explained by all independent so whether whether if i include if i include one more variable one more variable in dependent in independent is that r square value will increase or decrease yes so if i am adding one more regressor in my model regressor that means you know it is independent or a regressor so is that my r square value increase or decrease This is known as R square adjusted. This is known as R square adjustment. So what, what is the difference you found here? In R square, you are, we are not dividing by the degree of it. But here, we are dividing by the degree of it. That much difference is there in R square adjusted and R square. Okay, rest will be the same. But explanation is same. Whatever things gives R square, same thing gives R square adjustment. So it's a proportion of the variation in the dependent variable is explained by the all independent remaining independent. 
that is that is the same so whatever the contribution whatever the variation in the my independent variable having same thing will be explained by by the independent that is same thing will be contributed in the independent but my question is if i'm adding one more independent variable in my model or one more regression variable in my model is that my r square value will increase or decrease increase or decrease yes anyone it is going to be increase what about r square what about r square what we have studied what we have studied in r uh, in sl it may increase or may decrease remember this is all basics this is all basics which you must know okay so when you add one more variable your r square value definitely going to be increased but your r square adjusted may or may not be increased okay it may increase it may not be increased so make sure that this is the one very important concept which you should know yes tell me so i think with this i have finished the unit 3 any question yes any questions okay so with this i have finished this unit 3 so you can just uh, go through this entire thing which maybe very soon i'm going to upload in canvas so you can you can go through the notes everything is available in canvas now i just want to tell you how many students are submitted their practicals which is fundamental of our only 13 students out of 60 only 13 students out of 60 so i'll share the screen only so that you can able to see your uh, you can able to see properly who are submitted there you can I, i hope you can able to see their names at least email id please see properly and who is not submitted please submitted maybe today or tomorrow shail dube mute yourself you can able to see the screen of graphs and diagram that is your second practical i think and fundamental of r is your first practical so 
so i'm just uh, scrolling the name of the students who have submitted their practicals so you can see here the names which is listed here okay i hope everybody can able to see the screen correct can you see can you see your name properly everything yes sir yes so anyone who has not anyone who has submitted but their name is not there aisa hona nahi chahiye but still i'm asking so if you have not submitted let us bet today or tomorrow you have to submit your both the practicals because i think this is we have completed unit 3 and you have not submitted the first unit ka practical so far see how lazy you are all complete your task 